Wow. Of course. Or driving right. Any cardinals? There was a person who. Good evening and welcome to the May 9th meeting of the New Market Conservation Commission. And it's uh, 7 o'clock, so we'll go ahead and start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Perfect timing for the roll call. <laughs> Ready, sir? Here. 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 Okay. Doesn't appear that we have any member of the public here tonight. So we will proceed on to approval of the minutes. Did everyone get a chance to review the minutes? Any questions, comments? Minutes? No? Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from April 11th. I'll second that motion. All in favor? I have to abstain, I wasn't here. Okay, looks like four. Okay. I, <laughs> I went by the town office today to get our mail, but I did not I did not get a treasurer's report, so I do not have a treasurer's report to share. So I'll follow up again and see if I can get an update as to when we're going to get our financials. <laughs> um, we did have some things that I had sent out, so 
we did send out our annual, which we approved last time, our annual fees for uh, New Hampshire Conservation Commission Association. Um, the field trip was uh, for funding for the eighth grade field trip to the Boy Scout camp, and um, that's it. Those are only two. Um, okay, subcommittee reports, town council. A uh, couple brief points, I guess. Uh, first off, Heron Point is the gate is operational. Uh, it is set up to the timer to be open and closed. Uh, opening at sunrise, closing at sunset. Um, that has to change with the season because it's a it's connected to a clock, obviously. So our um, Depart uh, Department of Public Works will take care of changing that and adjusting it. Um, but yeah, it's fully functional and it's uh, it's working pretty well so far. There's going to be some some tweaks and adjustments over the next couple weeks, but it's uh, for all intents and purposes, it should work just fine. That's good Great. to go. Great. Um, and the only thing, uh, other thing that's in terms of town council stuff that I thought I'd mention would be um, uh, there were some concerns about uh, pesticide or no, sorry herbicides for uh, Roundup use on sidewalks and pavements. Um, so that's we've actually pushed that to the Energy and Environment Commission to kind of look at alternatives. Uh, we are contracted in until June thirtieth of twenty twenty, um, and we've got some uh, we've reach out to the company to see if they have any alternatives, and they don't seem to have much that's feasible, but um, a few things have been discussed, such as using uh, steam and, and other methods to get rid of the, uh, the weeds, but um, the town's actively looking into it, um, and the Energy and Environment Commission's gonna try to do some research and present some ideas. Great, and that's it. Thanks, Casey. Sarah, planning board? So I was away at the last planning board meeting, but I know they scheduled a site walk for that um, golf driving range. The parking capacity on that again? It was huge. Like mm -hmm. 900 cars. Yes. I think I said 900, spaces. but I think it was 90. 90. 90. 95 space. 95. 95. Even that. That's still a lot. That's crazy. Yeah, that's still a lot. Uh, I'm sure they'll, they'll have lots of questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll go on to stuff that I have. I just want to thank Casey again for all the work he did on that gate. Mm. It was amazing. <laughs> amazing. Um, well, I, yeah, and the first thing I wanted to do also was was thank Dale Jones. He organized a great event. He had so many people down there. Um, he had people that enabled us to get some, there were some trees across some of the boardwalks, and he had some people with heavy equipment who were able to remove those, Fantastic. so we got all of those um, trees that were down and were actually a hazard so we were able to get those removed mm -hmm. and we took out a lot of trash and junk and just gave it a good cleaning so it looks Fantastic. really good yeah. he did a great job and he he's really a great advocate so I want to thank him for all his work yeah and, and even our, our facilities director was great with the proposal and saving us a lot of money by using the, the gate that was there too because the alternatives that were presented that I got the quotes on, um, it, it's nice to use the current gate because it's just subtle and everything fits right on it. So I think our facilities crew for taking care of that so well. It took a village, but yeah. you really, <laughs> you really did. You were the main point person. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, so that was great, and um, glad it's back open. And yes, thanks to everybody. Um, we have. Um, one question that came in late, but so I added it here. So, um, Newfield Conservation Commission um, is looking at a bridge that actually is adjoins both our properties pretty closely. Um, if you're familiar with Neil Mill Road, and you park there and then walk the road, the first road that you come to on the left is Halls Mill Road, and if you walk down that road, it takes you towards the Piscassic River, and there's an old bridge there that is falling apart. Um, I should say the planking over the top is falling apart, and so their proposal is that um, 
we replace that. And they're asking us because I think most of the bridge actually is on our side. So um, they wanted to, to run that by us. They said they had a crew of volunteers that was ready to mm. kind of step in and do it. So there's no cost to wow. us or anything. Um, but they did want to get our permission. So I think we should, if, if we're in favor, if we want to discuss it further. But basically, um, I try. I didn't print out picture of it but if you go down there you would see there's actual places where you can look down and see the river so um, it's it's definitely not safe for getting to that stage and um, so the planking would restore it to um, being safe for pedestrians bikes and I think snowmobiles obviously use that in the winter time skiers as well I used to ride my horse over through there yep I think horses. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if there's any discussion about that or questions. And there wouldn't be any structural change, no change to the structure or shape of it, just replacing the rotten planks. Right, just just putting new planking over it. So they did the same thing with a very similar bridge that they had, and so they provided a picture. So it would just be new planks across the top, but it wouldn't it wouldn't grow in size or mm -hmm. anything like that. It would the same size as the current bridge. So they have volunteers for the work power, but what about materials? Well, I will ask them, but they didn't bring that up, so I'm assuming they I also just had that, on TV. that <laughs> in covered, but, but I'll ask them. Um, I think they wanted to first know uh, if we're in favor yeah. of it, um, and I'll certainly ask that if they're looking for a financial contribution. I mean, which we should do. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kind of estimating, you know, if, if you replaced it with all weather planking, mm -hmm. which is what I would recommend doing, I wouldn't imagine that the whole thing would be more than, you know, $500. Yeah, because um, we just um, bought a few for uh, Shopmire Park, so that's how I know oh. kind of what the cost is. But, um, so I, yeah, I don't think it'll be too costly. That's a great idea. And again, I don't know if that, I got the sense the Snowmobile Club is very involved in this, mm -hmm. and I don't know if they have raised oh. funds to do this, because obviously it, it probably affects them more than any other group. Because um, I do think, um, you know, you could walk across it pretty safely, but, but snowmobiling is probably, yeah. It's great that, um, we can collaborate with, with another conservation group too. Yeah, yeah, I think nice. so too. Yeah. I, they, they, uh, I think they recognize that both towns crisscross each other's property there. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice collaboration. So I will uh, reach out and, um, you know, Sam, unless you want to, you, you brought this to our attention, unless you want to. It, it's up on. to you. I don't mind doing it. I've worked with. Uh, with Andy for years. He okay. was actually a Newmarket resident. Um, now he lives in Newfields and sits on their con con. Okay. So I, I know him well. I don't, I don't mind. So why don't, yeah, why don't you go ahead and reach out back out to him and, um, and you can kind of find out, you know. Let's, let's, I'll, I'll go ahead and make a motion yeah. that we would support working with the Newfields Conservation Commission to replace the bridge on Hall Mill Road um, that cr crosses the River, so to try and give it a very specific location. Um, I'll, I'll, se I'll second that. Second motion. All right, all in favor? Looks like we're all in favor. Okay. Particularly, what uh, would you like just to see if they're seeking financial contribution? Yeah, you tell them that we would obviously be willing to uh, to contribute, or even if they're if they need any assistance, I, I'd be willing to go down there and help them. I, it doesn't, I think the hardest part is actually going to be removing <laughs> the present planking and not putting new planking on, but because uh, that's that's looks like it's in there pretty well into those timbers. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask. I think at one point there were tractors and stuff going across there. I don't know how long ago that was, but all right. And the only other things I have, um, we've got 
Great Bay Matters. So if anyone wants to look at Great Bay Matters, I have that. Um, nothing for us to sign or review, but um, just updates on the 17 Moody Point Drive uh, application. Um, they're working with NHDES to uh, answer some questions, so they copied us on this. Um, so I'll go ahead and pass that around if anyone. We've reviewed that project with them. They did a presentation, but there's nothing. Um, and then the last thing I have is the, um, this is the permit. Um, This is, this is the project to um, rebuild the culvert at Loverland Creek. And um, this is the permit that they receive. So um, if anyone wants to look at it, it gives you all the, it gives a lot of details about it, exactly what will, what will entail. But I think everybody, and eventually we'll get back over to you too. Um, but, uh, talked about that project before. Everyone's familiar with that, I think, at this point. And uh, so it looks like they are ready to go. And just got an, just copied on this. I, again, no action required, but the, um, the planning board's decision and development agreement with um, the new buildings out at uh, New Market Industrial Park. So again, no no action required by us, but they did copy us on it if anyone wants to see information about that. And I also got a copy of the announcement for the 2019 Lakes Congress, which we get every year from the New Hampshire Lakes Association. And um, it's really an interesting conference conference if anyone ever wanted to go. Um, they cover a lot of different topics. It's not just about lakes, so if anyone wants to check that out. I don't really have a lake here, but... I'm going, um, but as part of my job with the Lamprey River, right. I can bring materials back because a couple of the workshops really did look like they could be interesting for oh, health and safety great. of the water There's, issues. So. Yeah, no, that's... that's There is something there on, on which I think is great on talking about how conservation lands yes. can improve the lake quality because that's water quality is one of their big focuses yeah. i noticed that that's really becoming a huge issue for new hampshire lakes which is you know. and a side issue maybe today's new uh unh cooperative extension newsletter has a big article about two grad students who finished their research projects one of them is related i thought to us it's the value a community could put on trails and greenways in their town and that's on our charge is to put a value but they they've done economic analysis to just to help determine what could that do for the economy of your town to have greenways and trails and then there was one and also uh the other one how did i forget this one um it's apps that can be used to help and they need help with taking gps coordinates to mark trails and sites along trails I should for I'll forward that to right. you. So similar to what we had the presentation on last meeting. Sim, uh, I wasn't here last meeting. Yeah. Oh, you were here last meeting. Or so that might have been wicked redundant. Yeah, yeah sorry. You should watch the video because <laughs> we had a great presentation on I using apps. I bet to, it's the same. Yeah. She reached out to me. One of the the girl from UNH who's doing that. Okay. Um, she reached out to me through the um, our group's uh, Facebook. Oh, group nice, on, yeah. nice. So. Um, yeah, and that was actually one of the things I wanted to just sort of mention was it was the same thing as we had presented last week. Nice. Or last month. Yeah, that we had a presentation um, with, uh, now I'm forgetting our person's name who came presented from Rockingham. Um, oh, the country, planning, yeah, planning, planning, planning commission. commission. Yeah. He, he has an expertise. Yeah. Yes, and he's on, he is on, um, 
the New Market uh, Budget Committee, but he has expertise, so he's really not here in the capacity with Property and Planning Commission, but here is just a New Market resident yeah. to show us how to use that. But it's it is worth checking out if you want to watch the video I will or do that. the minutes have information about it as well. Okay. okay. Um, Side of the room need this one. There's an article about sea lampreys. If you ever want to know about sea lampreys, really? I know people often have a lot of questions about what a sea lamprey is. Um, I think that's it for for me. Um, so under old and new business, just to remind everybody, we have serve with liberty tomorrow, and. Uh, the forecast is for rain and 55 degrees, so I've told everybody to uh, dress appropriately, and um, Richie Shelton has given us a great list of projects to do at Schottmeyer Park, so we're very excited. We've got a lot, we've got plenty of work to keep us busy for as long as we can withstand the weather conditions. I'm just hoping it's not raining too hard. Um, it's but, gonna be very muddy. I was just down there about an hour ago, and it's it's muddy. Yeah, I told everybody to wear like their rubber boots. <laughs> like mm -hmm. this is, I said, almost dress like you're working on an Alaskan fishing boat. It's just gonna be that wet. So, um, I'm glad that, that you have. I I may not be able to get time off from work. I put in last month, but anyhow. Okay. Um, well, Richie's going to come down. I'm and glad there's a list of things to do. I know you were concerned about having enough to do. No, we Richie helped us for that. He got us plenty to do. So okay. he's going to come down and, and, and give a little overview about the park to the volunteers, which I think is nice. great. And uh, Rick Malaski was very nice about he's going to drop off the tools that we need, so that'll be great. And uh, we'll, we'll get too busy with it. Um, we did receive our annual request, which I will pass around from the New Market Fishing Derby. This year is their 30th year, and they're going to have a lot of commemoration of that at the Fishing Derby. That's awesome. So this is their letter with their request, um, so if anyone else wants to see it. So we traditionally contribute towards the purchase of the fish for the fishing derby. So that's where the money goes in case anyone's curious. Um, and uh, if you have kids, on, I think it's 14 and under, I believe is the age for the fishing derby. You can register either uh, through New Market Recreation. Um, you can go down and register at the offices there or you can register the day of the fishing derby. And they have um, lots of fish in Amanda Richmond's pond, so it's it's uh, right off of Lang's Lane. You won't be able to miss it that day because there will be all, lots of cars <laughs> leading you right there and parked along the side of Lang's Lane. And what else can I tell you? Um, they, got, they always have great prizes for the kids that participate, everything from biggest fish to smallest fish, most fish, all that kind of stuff. So they, they've got it covered and it's a, it's a great event. The Boy Scouts um, do a lot of work. And uh, so I encourage everybody to, who has kids to go and have some fun. Hopefully they'll get good weather. It is the traditionally the um, Saturday before Father's Day. That's how you know what day it is. So mm -hmm. Father's Day is on a Sunday always. They do it the Saturday before that. And it usually starts right around say, 7 o'clock in the morning. That's when you want to be there by. And they have coffee and donuts for adults who are a little blurry-eyed. So. <laughs> so did everyone get a chance at that letter? Around? Did they, they put how much they're asking for on that, right? So. Okay, I was going to say, traditionally we've given $1,500. That's what we've given every year. So I was going to propose that that's what we, uh, what we give. Um, if anyone has any questions.
questions about that? So I will make a motion that we support the New Market Fishing Derby with a $1,500 uh, gift for the purchase of fish. I would second that. Okay. All in favor? Okay. So I will make sure and let them know that. I'm going to see Rich tomorrow. Um, photo contest. Do we have any updates on that? I want to make sure that. <laughs> Not too, too much. Um, I uh, just put up the announcement again today um, in the Facebook group just to remind everybody and stir some interest. Um, we did have uh, a small issue with the email address. Um, the original address was at .org, um, but the address is actually .gov. Right. So we want to make sure that that's, everyone knows about that. Okay. When in this timeline do you think we should start nailing more plans about using the, the bus? Um, uh, when I talked about uh, the direct part, but they basically said, they weren't too worried, just give them a couple weeks heads up at least. So we need to, uh, th we're May, we should probably put that on our agenda. We should probably have another small group discussion yeah. to bring things to our agenda for June so that it's really like a month in advance. People know that there is this tour, mm -hmm. tour de force opportunity. So then this would be the, July would be the event that needs the bus then? Yeah. I think originally that was kind of an idea you put out there because it really would feel like a summer kind of a thing yeah. to do and and um, that would give us time to map out and plan who might be able to be at which of the properties for this bus tour or what do we want to do about this bus tour and whatnot so we could put some together some ideas and bring them for the june meeting does that make sense i think that makes sense okay I know one thing. It's cool that you were able to network with, with um, Park and Rec. Yeah. Thank you. And we maybe uh, brainstorm a couple possible dates for July. It's not like the bus should be available when we want it, but just have a couple ideas that I can kick out to the rec department. Well, if our meeting is in June, it should be later in Jan in July yeah. to give us ample time to put it together for you know to get what we need to do as a group to put that information out, and then have it late in July to give us as much yeah, time. Yeah, I'm as wondering possible. if maybe it makes sense just to keep the dates as close to the launch of the exhibit as possible, and that is October 19th. So maybe yeah, June, I mean uh, July, whatever. 19th or whatever that oh, oh that kind of number yeah. I thought you meant to have the bus in October no, oh. no, no, no oh oh so it's like so the dates are you know, yeah consistent um, are would there be dates that you can't do it I would look to you because I think you have a pulse on a, on a on the real dynamic of having it feel like an event and having there be something afterwards maybe um, July 19th is a Friday um, we talked about a weekend right yeah maybe the 20th or the week before, the yeah. 13th. 20th or the 13th. Guess what, Great I would say 20. Through the Seasons Photography Contest. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> doing what the cool kids are doing. <laughs> How about that? Copy oh my goodness. Well, I can put an email out with, with those two potential weekends and see what See if something is. else is yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. Just at least get started and we can talk. Very interesting. The 20th yeah, would be my first choice to give us the most time after our June uh, conservation meeting. Mm -hmm. That's okay. a good idea. Thank you, Melissa. That's great. Melissa, thank you for doing that. Need to go to fly. I'm sorry. What does it say? It says, um, "Calling all shutterbugs. Showcase your photography skills and your love of Great Bay, and you could win." Great Bay Nas National Estuarine Research Reserve is holding the first of four separate photo contests featuring Great Bay through the seasons. The purpose of the contest is to help improve our image library to use in exhibits and the website for publications like Great Bay Matters. Um, digital images are being accepted in 
the categories of flora and fauna, land and waterscapes, and people enjoying the bay. They'll be judged on originality, creativity, and image quality. First prize wins $100. That's great. Um, and they will have their photo featured on the cover of one of these issues. Second prize is $50, and third prize is $25. And they list a, um, the website for rules and info. <laughs> all right. Anything else? That's all I had. Does anyone else have any other items? Anything else that came through uh, social media that we should be aware of? No. We're just continuing to update on related matters like, you know, bird feeders being popular with the bears this time of year and things like that. That is a good one. Has anyone reported that they spotted a bear recently Everybody, in the park? Yeah, there's a lot of people. I know there was the one that was out like by Shanda Drive that was spotted a lot a few years ago. Oh, but really? I didn't hear anything. And then there was the one at the school, the elementary school that time was spotted there. But yeah. I haven't heard of any other ones recently. Okay. I had a quick item from Lamprey River um, Advisory Council which is to think about or realize that they have community grants available um, up to $6,000 for groups just like these, or you could be an individual with an idea to carry out. Um, it's a rolling basis, there's not a deadline, but when their fund for those community grants is depleted, it's gone. So if you had an idea, or if, or if this group had an idea, or if you belong to another group that could have something to do with ecology, education, outreach, awareness, plants, fish, what, what, however you tie into the fact that we're at, on the Lamprey River, there's there's money available and grant money available for those types of projects. That's good to so know. What, so can you give me an example of a project that would be? Um, well, in theory, if the bus costs some, oh wait, that's conser we're limiting that to conservation land, so that might not exactly fit. Um, Invasive plants, we could say we're concerned about, somebody could say they're concerned about invasive plants on on waterfronts. So you could say we're gonna pay a stipend to a person to come in and give us a workshop or a lecture about invasive plants or um, homeowners landscaping at the waterfront or homeowners um, wanting up-to-date information about uh, wells or sewers on land that's in the watershed and potentially affecting the water. Um, it's extremely open-ended, and some of the past ones have been targeted to certain groups. There have been, for instance, Girl Scout groups going and doing some mapping of where they found amphibians or vernal pools. Um, I mean, it's truly that open-ended. They tend to be for six-month periods, and they tend to be, it's a one-page application, so it's not like, I mean, you know, you hear the word grant and you think, but I'm fluent in English and I have a college degree. I don't think I can get to this paperwork. This is really humanistic and user friendly. This, it's basic questions. Um, what are you gonna do? Why are you gonna do it? What's the educational impact? How does it tie into the Lamprey River Advisory Council's overall mission, which is online. The best way to find that out is just look at their website and look online. I don't do it justice by summarizing their mission in a few words, but it really is education and outreach, public awareness, increasing use of waterfront or something to do with the school curriculum could be involved. Or the garden club. Uh, if, yeah, garden club could, absolutely a garden club could so be involved. I see, I see rain barrels on here for one project. I oh, see a yeah. Deer, Deerfield Community Trail Network and Map creation. Uh, I see some uh, DVDs highlighting certain things. I see a natural playground plan for Mary Blair Park and Epping. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's quite a bit of stuff on there. Wow. Bio inventory and stewardship plan, rain garden project. I know a couple of towns had needed large sums of money for updating their their uh, mapping plans. Um, so they asked for 6K or 5K to go into what they needed for 15 to pay a, an agency or a county group. It's really diverse because it goes, you figure, 49 miles, so it goes from Northwood 
Candia, Raymond, Deerfield. I mean, the towns are really diverse as the projects are. Yeah, we apparently we used it, or New Market used it in 2016 for the uh, Splash and Dash. Oh, so Amy had applied for the yeah. Splash and Dash. Yeah, because And I they had a surplus last year. They didn't use all the money they had in the fund to distribute. I, I was kind of partial to the rain barrel kind yeah. of idea yeah. and sponsoring something for homeowners that could have something to do within it. Does that tie in with what Conscom is supposed to be doing and advertising as well? So well, we used to do the rain barrel. We used to have rain barrels that we sold and the main issue was having a place to store them mm -hmm. um, and making it easy for people to buy them. So when Fred he was on the commission he kind of personally took that on himself I wasn't on the commission now but he sort of personally administered the rain barrel project people so he one man at his home yeah well a grant a, could pay for a couple of uh, storage storage shed storage units for yeah, instance yeah well I was yeah I was also thinking if there was anything so if a rain garden project falls into that you know bucket of eligible things mm -hmm. if we were to return to Santa Park and look at that master plan is there anything we could be doing down there if we rehab the park and we include something like that in there could we get some funding for that I'm not trying not to answer. I'm trying to sit real carefully on a fence since ultimately I would hate to have to recuse myself right. when it would come time to vote toward giving money. Yep. And I'm pretty sure you would want me to vote. Right. So I would say, like when little kids play just... warmer, warmer, oh, freezing cold, I'd say, oh, Patrick, <laughs> boiling hot. <laughs> okay. All right. Don't ask okay. Chris any more questions. Okay, all right. Yeah, you were the That's one who looked I it said. up online and started blabbering. I, I didn't want to do that, so it was my job to tell you there's grants there's possibility. So we could now, if you had a grant idea, would I be happy to work on it too? Yes, that would be valid. Okay. But I think in the meantime, talking about it too much more for me, I when don't feel comfortable. When is the deadline? It's, there is not one. It's a rolling process. So you could go That's online. You know rolling. rolling means they've got X dollars. I don't want to. I know the sum, but I don't want to say it out loud. I don't right. think that's right either. They've got X. And what's it? What's Six K is the maximum. Lamprey River Advisory Council. If you just if you look up Lamprey uh, River Advisory Council, it talks there. It has a copy yeah. of the grant pro, the the proposal you have to fill out. But um, six K, six thousand dollars is the max, and it should be something that you can really do in about six months. If you need an extension, you say why do you need. I don't think they've ever not granted the extension. But it shouldn't be something that you have this big idea and then it turns out the CONSCOM rolls over and um, these three people don't want to get renominated, so we have to wait and then it kind of lies fallow. It really should be something you say, oh, we're beginning, middle, end, we can do this, we can do that, and here's our culminating event. Or here's the pieces that we are going to put together because we have the $6,000. Or $1,000. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to ask right. for six, but six gets you. A pretty pretty big project really yeah. I mean not counting DPW kind of big but right. you know humanistic humans in a room big <laughs> or it could be a chunk of there's you could rent equipment you could say if we had another da -da -da, Joe with his excavator could come and do this and that and then we could have this other part of the trail that leads to thus and such fixed up You see what I mean? I'm not trying to be nebulous. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I think you've been very helpful. Any other questions? Uh, not about that, but I did just want to finish up what I had mentioned earlier. Um, DES has gone through a lot of uh, rulemaking changes for the wetlands permits, and one mm -hmm. thing they've been asked by a couple different parties, and uh, I got to add to that. Um, was trying to produce some sort of documentation that actually says what a CONCOM is allowed to do, required to do, requested to do on different um, kinds of wetland permit applications, whether it be expedited uh, permit by notification, standard application, things like that. Um, 
as someone who has to present to concoms, I love that because I don't know half the time what yeah. I actually want them to do. So it sounds like it's something that had they been asked a number of times, um, not going to hold my breath, but they were kind of hoping for maybe in the fall. But I'll, I'll keep an ear out for it, I guess, just if, I, if it comes up again. Uh, but I think that would be, be nice for us so that we knew kind of when applicants came in what they may be seeking from us ahead of time, um, just so we kind of know how to temper our response. If we don't hear anything by the fall, we can always wait till the annual state conference and they'll be there and we can ask them. Hey, when <laughs> You'll have a captive audience. <laughs> when, when will you guys have that for yes. us? Because I, I think that would be really helpful. Sometimes, he, yeah, you talk to them and it's kind of just throwing, throwing grass into the wind. And it's like, uh, is that ever going to happen? Maybe not. Yeah. But yeah. it seems like that's something that they've been grilled on a number of times and uh, from, from all sides of the fence like me who have to go and present it's like these people ask me what what I'm asking what I want from them and I don't I don't know <laughs> and that's kind of an awkward situation <laughs> yeah so. all right well, well keep us posted yeah if I hear anything I'll let us know <laughs> okay anything else Uh, on the Dearborn letter, we've still got a couple issues around um, getting their right-of-way language drafted and then working uh -huh. on it, but we're closer. Once we get that part done, this is the letter to all the members, and uh, this is complex. <laughs> so it's... Uh, it's something that, but I'll, but I'll, as soon as I have a drop to share with you guys, I will, but we're close. We've got 90% done. We're just trying to get that right of way language um, nailed down for that because really the only right of way that there exists is on Grant Road. We, we were looking to see, this is again the Dearborn property, if there was any possibility of creating a right of way access point on Pendergrass, and there isn't. So mm. that's ruled out. So it's just about Grant Road um, between 202 and 210, I believe it is, is where the access point has to be. There is no mm -hmm. other options. So we need to clearly have that on the deed written out, and that's what we're working on. Mm -hmm. so. Thanks for reminding me about that. Okay. Is there anything else? Okay. Motion to adjourn at 742. Second. <laughs>